Hi everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. My name is Gabriella Handel, I'm a draftsman, and today I want to make another video about finished work versus reference. I think it's the third one I'm making. Anyway, I, I think you can put the playlist uh, I, I can put the playlist in a card here, so I'm going to do that. Um, because I, I think I've recorded a two or three more, I don't know, whatever. The thing is that I this is an ongoing series, because I find the relationship between artwork and reference, whether it's an obvious thing like a photograph or other stuff like a landscape, you know, that's transient or whatever, to be very interesting, because like that translation from reference material, what you see with your eyeballs, to going through the filter of your body and out through your musculature and movements through your hand is just very interesting to say the least. Okay, So yes, uh, please like and share if you want to support my channel. I hope you do. Please like and share, subscribe, leave a comment, look at the uh, links in the video description if you want to help even more more powerfully, please do so. There's links there to my website, uh, a coffee where you can just make a one-time coffee donation. Um, you, I sell prints through Inprint. Um, I have some Amazon stuff. And yes, just look at everything. And okay, let's get on with it. So, okay, the drawing that I want to talk about is a drawing that I finished recently. Where is it? Just give me a minute. God damn it to hell. You know what the problem is? I have a lot of tabs open in Photoshop here. And... Just give, just give me a minute. Yes. All right, so let me show you the drawing now. Let me make myself small. God damn it. Here it is back here. This is the drawing I finished recently, untitled. And there's an issue with my showing you this drawing here because the paper is kind of grainy. It's kind of toothy. Uh, I used Kenson for watercolor, and it has a lot of it has visible texture. So what happens with that is that it's difficult to scan and so what I have done is I copied a colleague her name is Dory Wynott I had her on my podcast I'm gonna put the card up here and what she does for her watercolors is that she scans them the right way up and then the wrong way up and then she layers those two things on top and it usually evens out depending on the tooth of the paper it usually evens out the scan so that you have a good scan that is very similar to your drawing and if you want to make prints you know they're not weird this type of stuff um uh the card for dory that i'm going to put is for uh her con the conversation that we had on my podcast a conversation about art that is what i will put a card to uh but anyway yeah this is the drawing that i finished this is again this is untitled and this started out as a drawing from imagination 
and it's just a frontal portrait, head and shoulders, a bust portrait, um, head and shoulders again. And this, you know, it's pretty close to life. I made it a tiny, tiny bit darker than, um, can I show you? Anyway, it doesn't matter. The thing is that the scan wasn't as good. Not just because of the texture, because uh, I didn't correct the curves and things, but I did for this here so that you could see it. This is way bigger <laughs> than the original. The original is, um, I should maybe I should show it to you, but it's in a folder, in a portfolio. It's like four by six or something. It's pretty small. Uh, so again, this was from Imagination, and I used a lot of references. I don't remember all of the references that I used. I started this drawing several, several months ago, sometime last year. I don't know. Uh, lots of things changed. I don't remember what the original intent was. Um, I The only thing I remember upon starting it was that I wanted to make it in order to trade with someone because I told them that I really liked this drawing that they made. Um, even though I was already giving them a drawing because it was like a sentimental thing that I was, the reason for which I was giving them the drawing, um, for which I wanted to give them the drawing. But then I was like, hey, are you comfortable trading this super sentiment, what would be a super sentimental drawing for you for this drawing that you made, which is awesome. And they were like, yes, but then I still felt bad because his drawing, the drawing that that person was giving me was like way bigger than the one that I was giving them. Um, so I felt bad and I started, I made a couple of drawings and in order to trade more still, like something that felt more fair just because my drawings were so small. So I, this is the one, this is one of the ones I started. Um, and then he was just like, no, the drawing is fine. You're, the drawing you're giving me is fucking amazing. I love it. Don't send me anything else. And then I was like, all right, fine. Because I was also having a really hard time. It was weird. Um, doing any kind of commissioned work and traded work is just weird and difficult. <laughs> it's cool, but it's weird and difficult. Um, which is why it can be understood. Or at least I certainly understand that, you know, commissioned work, again, getting paid for your work, this type of stuff, it's like, guys, your work really legitimate, like, really what you want to do, this type of stuff. Because it does have an influence on the output. Um, that's not a bad thing, but I do feel like it has some kind of influence on the output. But anyway, that's how this drawing started. I don't remember anything else about the drawing. Um... So yeah, this lady has lots of things that I like. She has a Mila Jovovich nose, which is what I tend to draw because I tend to remember her nose pretty well. So she has like this uh, septum, a marked sep septum, flared nostrils, long. She has a big nose. It's a pretty little nose. Um, the hair is also Mila Jovovich. I'll, I'll show you the references that I used just in general. Uh, there's several pictures of Mila Jovovich that I, I actually used a couple of mine too because of the lighting because she has like this raking light, meaning that it's light that comes, I mean, similar to to what I have here, which is like just light that comes from the side. There, there are more specific names like the Rembrandt thing where you have like the triangle on the shadow side, this type of stuff. I don't remember the names right now, but it's raking light in general, meaning that it comes from the side. So it kind of, uh, kind of lands in different parts of the landscape of the portrait and of the shoulders. Um, yes. So I looked at all kinds of things, just pictures that I have, pictures that I like, to help me be able to draw this. And it um, was kind of annoying and frustrating because I feel like I am comfortable enough with the frontal portrait and the frontal shoulder girdle enough to be able to draw this full frontal one with raking light. But that was not the case. Um, and, you know, it's just because, you know, I want the thing to look good. Uh, I want to accentuate th certain things that I like about the shoulder girdle, about the neck, about the portrait. And in order to populate that information in a way that doesn't look weird, familiarity is not enough, you know, uh, might not be enough. Or I would need way more familiarity than what I already have. So yes, um, so what are the things that I like? I like a marked 
gigantic jawline, all right? It might be because my jawline isn't super, you know, my, uh, what would be otherwise kind of like a double chin is easily just, you know, it's kind of easier to see. It comes out on, it's very visible in profile. Like, I don't have to do very much for it to be visible, you know, this type of stuff. So, like, a more marked jawline, I feel, has is more difficult to, to see a double chin. It's, like, sticky outy. It's very marked on the sides. Like, I don't have any of these things. So, I think that's why I tend to find it appealing. Same with the neck. I love drawing long necks. Um, I think it's because my own neck isn't very long. And I also like very marked... Uh, clavicles and sternocleidomastoid and like the pit of the neck and this type of stuff and I think it's because mine again very shallow barely visible you know so uh, these are just hypotheses I don't actually know that's what I'm speculating for now I mean it makes some degree of sense um, but yeah so <clears throat> so of course this neck and shoulders are completely ridiculous if you saw this person in real life it would probably be terrifying she is deformed but of, you know, when we make work, um, when we make drawings and paintings or sculptures, if you manipulate your proportions, you can get away with a lot of things and make interesting, very interesting, satisfying looking things that don't look wrong, that don't make you uncomfortable, you know, um, but, but, but are still just very satisfying to look at. So, you know, the width of this, for example, from one side, it's like, look at this windpipe, for example, like the, meaning like the space that is between both sternocleidomastoids. In the drawing, it's just, it's very, very wide. You know, it's not, that isn't, where's my, why can't I draw? All right, just give me a minute. Okay, there you go. Look at this width. This is gigantic. This is very wide. All right, and, but I don't know. I mean, it looks cool. Um, and there's just other things. And I mean, it's not, you know, it's not like this stuff is physically impossible. Of course it happens. It shows up differently in different people. It's like, you know, the, this distance between certain cladomastoids might be more likely in a guy, you know, because they have bigger necks and more mus just generally, proportionally more muscular. It's easier for them to make muscle. So it might look just wider in general. And uh, these, this separation here between the sternal and clavicular head of sternocladomastoid, you don't see that necessarily in everyone, but you do see it, you know. Uh, that's actually one of the references that I use, and I covered his face. It's a picture that I took. Let me see here. That's not, that's one of the Mila p pictures that I used. Where, all right, just give me a minute. Uh, that's one of the pictures that I used as well, but. This is so annoying. All right, just give me a second. Oh. This. Right, so this person, this person has a marked separation between the sternal and clavicular head of sternocleidomastoid. I have looked, I have used this very same photograph another time. The other time is, um, is just called Mylar Drawing. You can find that on my website. And I modeled the shoulder girdle after, largely after this one, because as you can see here, like this part where you have And, uh, you know, this face, this face is covered, and in the other picture it's covered because these are civilians, you know, they're not like Mila Jovovich, that she's everywhere in movies and stuff. So, and, you know, I don't know if they want me publishing their pictures that way. But anyway, I took both of the pictures of these two individuals, uh, civilians. So anyway, the thing is that 
So you have your clavicular, your, your clavicle here, like up to here, like that. So this is the medial head. These are the medial heads there. And this is the lateral head. So this is this uh, end over here. This is where it comes together to, uh, what's it called? The scapula. Uh, just give me a minute. Acromion. This is where it meets the acromion. The acromion comes from the back and uh, touches um, the, uh, the clavicle there. And then here in the front, the sternal head of the clavicle is kind of like that. And then the first rib is like right here. And then it goes up like that. I mean, that's not, maybe that's too thick, but it kind of it goes like here and then it goes up around like this. Okay. Um, so then it's just like just the way that it looks on this person is just crazy to me because, um, you know, pectoralis, meaning the chest muscles, um, which we can see clearly here as well, right here, um, you know, there's of course, there, there's of course muscle here in this area as well, but there's shadow there because I guess the muscle in his case there is like thinner or something, and it's like thicker down here, I don't know. But just like the way that it looks, it looks as if that entire area of the clavicles and the and the sternum and the and the and the ribs, it just looks just like a freaking monster chest, you know? Because so let me talk to you more about what it looks like to me, which I think is really I mean, I enjoy the way that it looks. I don't think it's ugly at all. So, okay, so clavicle heads and the sternum is like around here somewhere like this or it might might be higher than that because we can see that the sternal head is like right here so it's probably more like this and more like that and then uh right so that's manubrium manubrium is like right here which is like the handle of the gladiolus which is a roman short sword um and then gladiolus is like meaning the body of the sternum is like here, and then xiphoid process is like down here like that, okay? That is what it is IRL in real life, okay? But, because, I mean, whatever it is about, because, you know, like, again, this is different for everyone, so whatever it is about musculature, fat distribution, bones, you know, veins, whatever, this just looks, it looks like there's this kind of valley here, it looks like that U shape is coming out and then all of this just kind of goes down. Like this U shape is like raised. Like that is an edge of a mountain. And this here in the middle is a valley. That's what it looks like to me. And I just think that is really cool. Like if somebody actually had that in real life, they're probably just deformed and sick. But it, you know, in this case, it just gives the impression, that gives me the impression of that. Um, and I just enjoy that. I don't know, just enjoy the way that it looks. So I used a little bit of that. This is one of the references that I used for the shoulder girl. And all right, so otherwise for the neck and shoulders, I used, I looked at a lot of Mila Jovich's own pictures. So I used this one more for the portrait. I love this picture of her. I know, but you know what? I actually used also this one to look at the behavior of the shadows, of the raking shadow on the shoulders, like the deltoid, like this triangle of shadow here, for example, and this other triangle of shadow, which are in different places because this one uh, here is on the deltoid, and this one is on basically the space between pectoralis major and deltoid. What is that called? It's called a triangle of something. Um, it's not this big. It's actually more like more like this this big it's not that big so this is in part pectoralis major and this teeny tiny gap just like a little teeny tiny separation between pectoralis major and deltoid um but anyway so like it makes this triangle here um that's present there and then there's actually a picture of mila this one this is the other this is the other picture that i used to help me with the uh, neck and shoulders, also for the raking light, but also because obviously her 
um, clavicles and shoulders are a little more similar to a little bit more like what I want to draw like the so in, in her case not so much like this area of the neck but more this part of the shoulders like this outside part and also it's depicting a bit softer um, shadows you know a little bit more feminine of this part of the deltoid that I was just talking about in the other picture versus this part of pectoralis to deltoid um, so then that's why I looked at this one and I mean it was also kind of helpful for the neck and a little bit for the, the, the clavicles but mostly for the shoulders uh, so that's why I looked at this picture maybe I should close it so that it's not my freaking tabs are driving me crazy here um, I looked at this picture also for the portrait because I mean this picture is just get the fuck out with that face are you kidding me oh but you can see her nose here really well and um, I mean you know like the n things about her nose that I quite like a lot which is these flared nostrils and it's crazy about her nose that when she poses like this her nostrils nostrils look super tiny but then from the side they're really long because they're flared as hell you know and uh, her septum comes way down too um, so that is certainly something that I uh, How do I see? Okay, here it is. Um, so, yeah, that's what I tried to do. Oh, I forgot that that's how I can see it, though. That's why I tried to do... Usually, try. I can do that from imagination easy. Basically, exactly what I'm doing with the mouse right now. Like this. This little spiral type thing. And you basically, you have Amila Jovovich nose. <laughs> All right, but then that's, I mean, that's, I'm just saying that's what I was trying to imitate with that. And her hair, do I have this specific, I don't remember if I opened that up, but I mean, it's like, it's, it's, I really associate this hair with Mila, like this short kind of shaggy Beatles-like hair, but a little bit longer and a little bit prettier and a little bit more disheveled. Um, so this is, I really associate that hair with her, a little bit longer than this maybe with a, the same thick fringe uh, but also this picture which I also really like and I think it's the same it's part of the same series as uh, which one is it uh. no. this one I think it's part of the same shoot Right, but then, you know, uh, I also looked at this picture for the portrait, for the shadows of the portrait itself, and here you can also see that, that nose, you know. Um, but yeah, that was, it, it was helpful just kind of for the eyes and the, you know, again, the raking light, not so much for the neck and shoulders because it's blurry, you know, but definitely for the hair like this, I'll show you right in my drawing, like look at this gap that is here, like that, with this one, handful of hairs coming through, like I totally did that very, tried to imitate that very thing right here, you know? Because, you know, it looks, it makes it look natural, um, and not, I mean, you know, it still looks like a drawing, but what I'm saying is that, you, you know, there's some naturality in there. Um, so, yes. Now, I want to go back to the shoulder girdle because I had to look this kind of stuff up. Okay, so this is what I was saying about the separation between the sternal head of sternocleidomastoid versus the clavicular head. So it's there's this tiny, teeny tiny little space here that sometimes is visible and sometimes it's not. It depends, you know. And if you go like, if you go kind of like, like that. You might be able to see it, but you can for sure feel it, you know, so that's there. Um, and then just, uh, yeah, so this is what I was talking about in the other picture. So like that is the, the clavicular, um, sternal head of the clavicle. And then the first rib is right there, 
you know, first rib is typically very, very close to the first clavicle. They're tightly put together there. Um, but then, you know, it's like I still need help to remember, I guess, that first of all, there are massive gaps in here of space. Like, look at that. I mean, the, the head of the humerus is super far from the rib cage because there's a muscles and skin and all kinds of shit in there. Um, and the clavicle and the scapula do not touch the rib cage or the arm, you know, the head of the, humiter, the hu uh, head of the humerus. It only touches the scapula. I mean, the entire shoulder system only touches the skeleton via the head, uh, sternal head of the clavicle. So, like, I must be reminded of this every time, and it's like, how does that affect the distance between stuff? Because I always feel like I have to look up again, kind of like where, it's like, what is the width of the shoulders on the side there? And where is the fold of the arm to the, the, um, the chest? This type of stuff. Um, it's just crazy. I feel like I always have to review it again. All right, so another picture that I looked at was this individual for also for the for the shoulders. But the problem here is that of course he's wearing a wife beater type situation. And I can't, you know, I can't see and not not to mention, I mean like, you know, the the neck the neck and the trapezius here like that's nice, but that that's nice. But then first, you know, there's of course the t the the shirt, but then here the pit of the neck to the clavicles are look very shallow compared to the other person that I was using. So somebody else that I looked at was this ballet dancer's name is Maria Koreva, I think. Uh, which is it's a, this all of this information, of course, is just lovely because you have, of course, head of clavicle here, first rib. It's just second rib. It's just lovely. Look at, she's barely raising her right arm and you can see kind of like the striation of pectoralis, one of the pectoralis majors there and it's like, uh, anyway, the, this is obviously, I mean, that was cool for the raking light also, but it, this is not a frontal shoulder position. It's three quarters. So I still looked at it, but I could only look at it so much. And I also wanted the information here from the, the shadow on the deltoids and the pectoralis major one that I was talking about earlier. Um, all right, so let's go back to the drawing. It's the combination of all of those things that resulted in this. Um, and I think I'd like to show you one more picture of Mueller because Does that show up? Yes, I love this picture. So this one and this one and this one are both by Peter Lindbergh. He takes amazing pictures of her, or took amazing pictures of her. But anyway, so from this one, also the raking light, of course, and that <laughs> magnificent nose. Uh, it's like, look at this. <laughs> look, anyway, that's just lovely. Um, what I really like about this picture is her mouth. So, and well, I like the the bangs or fringe, I don't know what that's called, also, but it's not as thick, I mean, it's thicker than the one that I used, which I like a little bit better. Uh, from here, what I took mostly was the nose area and the mouth area and a little bit of the shadows uh, around the muzzle and here the shadow side a little bit, um, but mostly the mouth. So, um, I don't know what the fuck she's wearing on her mouth here, but it is just amazing. Not to mention that her mouth is also amazing. But just like the expression of the mouth, it looks like she's mushing her chin a little bit and just kind of making a face. I don't know, but it's, it's no, it's very, very delicate. It's not super, it's not a grimace or something. I don't know. Um, you know, but it's very, it's very shiny. Let me close a few of these because these are fucking ruining my life. No, no, no. Can you still? Okay. Okay, we are almost done, you guys. I just want to talk about Milos's mouth, all right? Calm down.
So yeah, that was kind of the my model for this mount for um for the drawing. And you know, also I would say also this one, which I also use for the drawing. It's just called Mylar Drawing. It was very imaginative. That's on my website if you want to look at it. Um, you can find the link for that on the video description. Uh, the mouth here, I mean, this this one isn't glossy like this one, but, you know, it's like very, I don't even know if this is like really dark lipstick or what, but it's black and white, it looks dark, whatever. As far as I'm concerned, it's black, okay? Um, so, just like, there's this, so the upper lip is typically darker because it's in shadow, and it's also typically darker in color, or it can be very often darker in color. Um, and so, but at the same time, there's like this subtle, there is still shadows and I mean, darker shadows and slightly light, lighter shadows, I guess, that are here. And, you know, with this addition of the sheen of the gloss, it just makes them look like they're made out of melted latex and they look amazing. Um, and so that's what I was looking at and thinking of when drawing her mouth. And this, why does this look this way? I wish it was sharper. Um, so yes, that is the kind of information that went into this drawing. I think I'm gonna cut it off here. That was a lot of talking. Let me know if you find this interesting. Um, what do you think about the relationship between, let me put this away, between the artwork and reference some people, for whatever reason, think, a reason that I don't understand, think that the reference should not be revealed to the public or something. Uh, but, you know, that might be a contemporary art sort of thing in the sense that it's like all the more, more modern conceptual type stuff. Um, I'm not sure that I agree with that because, like, again, I find that relationship extremely interesting. Um, and of course, the end, the resulting artwork is not supposed to be the same as the reference. The point is for it to be different, um, usually, unless you're doing commissioned work, in which case it's still not supposed to be exactly the same as the reference because you're painting something else, you know? Um, but yes, tell me what you think about that. Tell me what you think about the drawing. Um, if you want to purchase the drawing, let me know, and we can talk over email or whatever. You can find also that information in the show note, in the video description. Please like and share, subscribe, leave me a comment with your thoughts, and check out the links in the video description if you want to further support my channel. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.